identifies as a crazy duck. So I've got a piece of blueberry in my hand. Yes, you know it's there. There you go. Which she was, um, she's following my hand cue in the hope that she'll get a treat at the end. So they're, they're tricks that she does individually, but when there's a bit of music on, you can actually pair them together and it becomes heel work to music. <laughs> so then you have heel work to music training as well as tricks training. Um, and I do heel work to music with my terriers. Um, and Echo actually, I don't think I've actually told anyone about this. Um, I did actually enter Echo in December for an online Hill Work to Music competition that had a class for anything that's not a dog. Um, and they weren't expecting a duck. And she came first. <laughs> Logistics are very similar in that I'm, I do it all reward based, same as I do when I do dog training. Um, oh, she's having a dry bath now. Come here, look. good girl. Um, it's all luring, so I have. Yeah, she's just she's just sorting her feathers out where I was holding her. She says, don't don't forget my feathers in a muddle. Um, so have a treat in your hand and you use the luring to guide to do whatever it is you're looking to do. So the process to get to playing the piano was starting to teach her a, a, what we call a nose touch with dog train, but a beak touch. Touch. She's not going to do that. Touch. Oh, yes, good girl. There you go. Limit it. Um, a beak touch. And then once she could do that, shh. Then we ask her to, oh my god, then we ask her to do it to another item and then gradually to, right, go in there. Chatting, oh my goodness. This is what it's, this is what it's like every time in a, in a, with a duck. Um, so, and then onto the piano and you just have to kind of build up. Um, ducks are naturally very suspicious about new things coming into their space, into their environment. Um, so she's less suspicious than most because she's home hat, so she's been brought up with, with, 
you know, household things. Um, but when you bring in something brand new, so the first time that she saw the toy piano, she ran away and didn't know what it was. So I then got her to do some things that she likes sort of in the room, but at a distance. Um, I then, because my, obviously my dogs can play piano too. Um, what, what, <laughs> what self-respecting terrier can't? Um, so got them to play it so she could see that they were happy with it and then gradually bring her closer. So it's all the same sort of stuff I do with, with dogs. Um, the main differences are we keep the sessions a lot shorter because um, one should end up exploding with the amount of treats uh, and two they would switch off far too quickly but also um, I have you can probably see I've got multicoloured mats all over the floor and I always have a handy scraper on, on hand because ducks can't control their colon at all so what comes in comes out quite quickly <laughs> Exactly, it's almost like there's nothing in the middle, um, so you have to kind of consider that when you're training as well. So, um, so I don't want her to get to the point where it's you know it's too hard for her to uh, yeah. to do anything. Joe, Joe, inevitably, somebody will phone me and say, "Isn't this cruel?" Yeah, someone might say. say um, I would say that she's asking for her piano to come down at the moment. I will, I will show you what she does in the moment. Um, yes, she has the option of walking away at any point. So she got, she's not got a collar or a lead or anything on. She's got a door over here open, the door into the rest of the house is open. She can walk away at any time if she would like to. Um, when she's doing tricks, she makes her happy noises, which you're hearing a lot of, um, aren't we? Um, and actually, there has been um, a couple of tricks that I've looked at introducing to her. She clearly wasn't too sure about doing it, so we just don't do it. Simple as that. So when I introduced a hula hoop for jumping through a hoop, she wasn't sure, she wasn't sure about it flat, held anything, so we said, okay, no problem, we just won't do jumping through a hoop, so we don't. And, and Joe, when, when did you first discover that Echo was trainable? <laughs> um, actually, when she was about nine weeks old. Um, so being home hatched, obviously, um, she's been with me, she's bonded with me from the moment she hatched, which did take about 25 hours. They're not quick, quick at hatching ducks, are you? Um, and so you're mum, aren't you? I'm mum, yes, very much so, and it's me that she asks for, aren't you? She hears my voice, she get a lot of quacking. Yeah. She's just me, 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 aren't you, hey? Uh, we, we, she used to chirp um, about three days before hatching, you'd hear a chirping, so I'd, you know, chirp back to get that bond started so we're actually we actually chatted before she was even hatched um that's all right to oh sorry the, the parrots are copying <laughs> i've got parrots in the other room the parrots are now copying what i'm doing i can't do it my oh, this whistle's gone you can't do it anymore. Um, so she'd chirp and we'd carry on with that. And then when they get to around six or seven weeks, if they're female, the chirp goes and becomes a quack. And if they're male, it becomes like a rasping sound. So male ducks don't quack. Um, so when she got to that age and the first time she quacks and I thought, oh, bless her, she's quacking for me. Oh, she's quacking, it's a girl. <laughs> now I know, now I know. Um, yes, I know, and she hasn't stopped quacking since. Um, when you stop it, you. Um, when she got to about nine weeks old, um, she was well. She was in the lounge anyway because she just sort of, she's in the house with the dogs and, and everything. And I've done work to make sure they're all comfortable with each other. Um, and over the uh, the Christmas of last year, and then going into the the start of the year with all the lockdowns, I'd changed my in person dog training to online. So I was doing lots of things with the dogs, and Echo would just be there. And I was teaching um, a twist or a spin, which is going around in a circle. And I was doing really look at a really exaggerated body language to teach it. And Echo just followed and did it. Um, luckily, I had vegan treats because she nicked the treat out of my hand as well little monkey and so i thought oh okay maybe she'll do this i don't know let's give it a try i've done some bits with the chickens but not with the ducks before so um yes yeah, so i grabbed some sweet corn and some peas and she did some twists and spins and i taught her the nose touch or the beak touch and then she just carried on yes i can't hear myself talk there you go darling um that's that happy noise again um and then um 
she just joined in on my online training more and more and actually became quite handy because my guys, I mean, one of mine's 10, you know, you've been training for quite a long time. So when I'm trying to show some of the foundation uh, exercise and puppy exercises, they kind of just do them automatically. It can be hard to show the real start of something. So I was able to work with Echo and she was able to show the very few first few stages because she hadn't done it before. So she actually was quite handy. And then when we came back to in-person training, people said, it's nice to be back, but we really miss seeing Echo. <laughs> Not the dogs, but Echo. <laughs> My 10 year old Norwich Terrier. Uh, Ripley, my three year old, is asleep somewhere in the other room along with the assistant's dog puppy I'm training. Boy, but this isn't is he? this is the Merlin man. You bend. Say hello. There he's a good boy. And up again. Good lad. Yes. He's having a little, a little bow hello. <laughs> Knows it on cue. Twist. No, that's not a twist. Apparently, twist. Yay! Oh, Echo. Echo just needs a little help. Twist. Echo. <laughs> so then I can ask. I can ask for the twist with one, and then visually get it with the other. Merlin, twist. She does tend to go a little bit off on her own and, uh, and freestyle, but uh, we'll see. She, she into Elton John or... A little bit of everything, to be honest. You know, she kind of mixes them up a bit, makes them a bit jazzy, does her own thing, um, often composes her own stuff. You do, don't you? <laughs> right, do you want to go out so we can get that piano on the floor? Because <laughs> otherwise he'll, he'll try and play the piano as well and it just gets get confusing. <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs>
you ready for this? She pushes a football. Yes. Um, in fact, if I'm doing the greens for all of the other birds and she's in here with me, if I'm not paying her attention or dropping the odd bit of food on the floor for her, um, then if there's anything on the floor that can roll, she'll start pushing it about. So if there's one of the um, sort of washing machine things that the fabric conditioner goes, fabric software goes in, she'll start pushing that about and then come back and say, I've pushed it, come on, give me a treat, I've pushed something. So whether it's a, a ball or a bottle or anything, a bauble. Oh, I don't know about that. I mean, we've got Colchester United much closer to us, so <laughs> it's a bit of a bit of a touchy subject that one. <laughs> go, go, go. Oh, blimey. It's it's so much fun, but it's also, I've got ME and it's really quite tiring because every time you sort of interact with people, it's, it obviously t it takes a lot of um, fatigue. Um, go and get that. But it is a lot of fun. Um, you just sort of try and remember how to say your name and stuff eventually. Um, but it's it's gone quite quite crazy. It's really nice because I enjoy her so much. I really love her company. It's nice, and we're getting messages from people on, on her Facebook page. Obviously, she's got a Facebook page. Um, so yeah, obviously, why wouldn't she? Um, saying how much people are, are just enjoying the story and it's so nice to think that just this this little tiny duck here can actually bring so many smiles to people it's it's so nice it's so lovely that she's been able to do that um and i'm even luckier because i get to see it every day obviously <laughs> when she's not yeah, shouting at me as you, as you can tell i've been sitting here with an idiot grin on my face for the last 20 minutes uh, this is just brilliant it's absolutely brilliant you're a monkey and, uh, People. she'd love it she travels fine she goes up the ramp into the car into the van into her travel crate yeah well, done. so how many animals all together have you got because we've met a dog we've, we've met one of the dogs met one of them let me see let me see if Aero will wake up we've got we've got two terriers ourselves I've got Aero the chocolate lab who is four months and she's the assistance dog that I'm training so she's living with us while I train her um, and she'll be going to a family as a dogs for autism um, assistance dog eventually um, we've got two uh, foster parrots in the house 
Um, what else have we got? We've got Echo. Echo has got an enclosure outside so she can be out and get sunshine and stuff um, as, as well. Um, and in there we've got Tim, <laughs> who is an 11 year old wood duck that we rescued a couple of months ago, bless him. He's quite shy, um, half her size, <laughs> but very pretty, really pretty, all colours of the rainbow on him. Um, their enclosure is next to two quails, Fred and Wilma, uh, two snow snowflake quail. Um, and then we've got two rescue cockerels who have their own flocks each. Um, one of them has got bantams, hens, which are all rescues. Um, and then the other flock is mostly Rhode Island red rescue hens, which are the, the typical hens you see in a rescue that are egg layers. Um, and then a few different hens that were rescued from a, it was more of a care case they, they needed to come out because they weren't being looked after. Um, and then down the end, let me know someone's here. Melvin, what is this? Melvin! I don't know what he's talking to. What are you looking at? Melvin, come on. Good boy. There you go. He's seen something out the window. Joe, thank you so much. Definitely. We've really enjoyed it. Thank you. Bless you. Thank you very much indeed. Oh, wasn't that great? Uh, Joe Nutkins there and Echo the piano playing duck. The sound. 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 That was brilliant. Thank you for inviting us. Really enjoyed it. Thank you very much for coming on. And, and uh, uh, although obviously you can see Dave, Dave can see you, what you were doing, that was just making great radio. <laughs> and Echo was uh, uh, making, making uh, cracks in all the other places. That's it, yeah. She's, she's handy for radio, isn't she, being a noisy girl? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Fantastic. There's not many people in the building, but I think everybody who is in the building has come and stood over my shoulder to watch. <laughs> Oh, you're very welcome. Any time. Take care. Have a good weekend. Bye.